When it comes to implementing GA4, objections are like opinions. Everyone's got one and they all stink. But are you gonna let objections get in the way of doing the right thing? No way. So stay tuned as I show you how to overcome some of the many objections you'll see when it comes to selling GA4 into your organization. I can't use Google Analytics 4 without blank report being available. Now the SEO is out there, definitely around um, SEO reports, landing page report, bounce rate metric. I can't get this with that. I don't like, you know, I don't like any of these things. The short answer is that if you really need a report and people are vocal enough, those reports will be added back in. The landing page report is an example. So I think that the objection is really more of a state and time. And it's something where once that report gets implemented, the objection goes away and you're fine. And that'll be retroactively implemented. So if you're missing a report right now, I think it will be in place in the next 12 months. But if you wait and you say, I don't want to install GA4 because that report's not there today, well, then you're not collecting data and you won't be able to do that analysis later on in the past. And then eventually in about 18 months from now, or no, actually a little bit more than that, maybe 24 months from now, you won't even be able to get into your old account. And so do you want to have it right now imperfect or do you want to not have it at all? That's the difference. It's not about you being right. I know you're probably right. Google should have put that in place. They shouldn't be pushing this out. They shouldn't be saying it's complete when it's not, but that's being petty. And that's not looking out for your objectives, which is ultimately to do the best thing for your org. The best thing for your org is to have data that you can rely on in 2024, not relying on stuff right now and saying, hey, no, this isn't there. This isn't in place. Susan says, will it cause too much confusion for our team is what my boss says to move. So yes, moving to GA4 will cause confusion, but what about when the move is forced upon you? Will you be more confused? Would you rather have a year to prepare for it and a year to get used to it or just have it switch over on July 1 when they're no longer collecting data in your universal analytics? Which would you rather have? And I know, Susan, you, I think you work with clients as well. Would your clients rather have nothing? And then you said, hey, I knew about this, but we didn't do anything because we didn't want to confuse you. <laughs> or would you say, yeah, we parallel track this thing and we were proactive with you. Which one do you want to do? I installed GA4 and the data doesn't match what I had in Universal. Is the data not accurate? Let's just say this. Um, data in Universal is not accurate either. <laughs> Web analytics data is never 100% accurate. There's a margin of error of people who do not execute JavaScript so that scripts don't load, people who have ad blockers in place who might block certain things here and there. There's also people who are on mobile devices and they close out the thing before it fully loads or a thank you page doesn't load all the way because they think they're done. So they just close out. Um, there's things around sessions where sessions are an imperfect beast. It's based on page views, not based on things that happen within a page. Event tracking is another thing that could affect data. And so um, the data has never been perfect. It's been directional and you can use it to say, are we in the right direction or not? Usually when something grows, something shows that it's growing in GA and vice versa, but it was never meant to be hundred percent perfect. And so you have to always realize that there's a certain level of discomfort with data and that it was never meant to be perfect. And yet actually these things are pretty accurate compared to each other. I just think that really the only difference is how GA universal and GA4 track sessions. Their idea of sessions are different. One of them is done through a hit type or, or through the, the hits themselves. And it's calculated based on distance between two hits. And then in GA4, sessions are a little bit more accurate in how they're calculated because of um, the way that they identify things. And so having an event-based model means that sessions are a little bit tighter because they're not relying on different hit types in order to be determined. And so I will say this, I think that it's more accurate, um, not less accurate, and, it, and neither of them are perfectly accurate. Kelsey says, we're finding it slow and hard to navigate, like not being able to just click on organic search and seeing the breakdown. Yeah, I don't love the interface. Like I said, they spent two years working on the back end, making that so that it's good, so that it can be an enterprise level tool, that it is to the level where they can sell an enterprise version. That's really what they've been focusing on. I think they're going to start working on the front end and making it um, similar to universal or as close to it as they can get moving forward. So I think you're going to see a rapid pace of innovation with front end stuff as the deadline approaches. Now, the good news is that if they fix the reports, the data you collected today will be in those new report formats. So you, you won't lose anything by implementing it today. Um, if you don't implement today, then you just won't have any data. Hunter says browsers will block cookies anyway and migrate to server side is too costly, too much work. So I think that's a, that's somewhat of a of a misnomer. There's an article that I can pull up, but it basically says that GA4 is is it works with and without cookies. 
So GA4 will work without cookies. You might lose some concept of who a user is, but then Google sort of stitches that together using their machine learning and their, their Google signals style where they're stitching that together for you. So GA4 works with and without cookies. If it's blocked, it doesn't lose everything. It doesn't even really make your reports all that much different. They fill in the gaps using their machine learnings. George says, um, it is like we start from scratch on an entirely clean slate. We have nothing to compare because most businesses treat GA sales reports and dashboards as they are their weekly updates or year over year views. Okay. So I'll tell you this, if you move over, if you install GA4 now and get the code running and, and tracking, you will never have a point where you have to worry about a clean slate for the next year. You can use universal analytics as you always did. And then a year from now, when you want to do a year over year comparison, you'd just be comparing um, GA4 year over year. And so I don't think it's really a, a starting from scratch as of today. Now, the objection buster is that if you wait until next year, you will be starting from scratch and you're going to be screwed. So you can either do it now and have something to stand on, or you can do it next year and have nothing. Um, objection, isn't GA4 just a new way of, of Google getting us to spend more on ads? Yep. The reason why it's free is so you can spend more money on ads. If they weren't growing like crazy with ads, then they wouldn't have this as a free tool. They would charge for it or they would just discontinue it. So that's always been the case. It's nothing new with GA4. Anita says, I don't like that Google doesn't give clear instructions on how to set up certain features, including events and inside search. The nav is not perfect and setting up exploration ports isn't intuitive. Otherwise, I like it. And we made the move to GA4 with our clients in January while also showing them and toppling GA3 data. I like that. Yeah. Um, Anita, I agree with you. I don't like how certain features and some events don't really work exactly how I want. Um, internal site search isn't too bad that you can do that with enhanced measurement. Then you just have to give them parameters it's just moved a little bit. Nav isn't perfect. So I, I think you're, I like it, Anita, you're an early adopter who is definitely dealing with some of the pains. And I think the solution is to just keep GA3 running as long as you can until they fix these kinks. Steven says e-commerce tracking is a mess. No product list reports, no ability to add product scope, to custom dimensions. I, I heard a little birdie last week that products, custom dimensions will be here by July. Um, that are coming soon, um, but it's that it is a problem. So you're right, Stephen. Onder says clients and I really don't like the views that they're not there. Easy to use the same. Um, so my objection buster to, to views is that almost every view that I've seen was used incorrectly, like stuff like a reporting view, raw data view. I have to say this lightly. Um, they were misused and they were a big waste of resources for most people. I think that if you can modify the interface in order to show a certain user a certain view, which you can do in GA4 now, that sort of replaces the need for a lot of those things. You can, you can choose what metrics they see, you can filter out a lot of stuff. So you don't really need to do as many filters. Um, and then also with the debugger, you can do your debugging live without having to worry about, you know, you, you can block, it automatically blocks you. So there's not as much of a need for the filters that we're used to in GA4. There will be views in the GA360. GA4 360 will have views. I don't know why it's not in the regular one. I think there could be views, but my, my objection buster is that we misuse views. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video on objections. If you wanna transition to GA4 right now the right way, I recommend that you download this handy GA4 migration guide, which you can get at ddu.ai slash GA4.